Hi, Rex here with Affordable Street Rods. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about choosing a safety switch for your air conditioning system. I have a lot of customers ask me, uh, number one, do I need a safety switch in my air conditioning system? The answer to that question is always yes. Uh, as you see in front of you, I have four different safety switches to choose from, and I'll walk you through a little bit about the differences uh, between them. So first of all, we have binary switches. Uh, binary indicates that there are two functions to the switch. Uh, these switches are high limit and low limit. The purpose is to protect your air conditioning system. Um, you'll notice that there are two spades on the back of each of these switches. Uh, what this guy does, this, screws, this goes in your high pressure uh, refrigerant line and inside of there's a little sensor to determine the pressure in your high pressure line. Um, the low limit of this switch is set at 30 pounds. So until you have 30 pounds of Freon pressure on the high side of your AC system, this switch remains open and it doesn't pass current from one spade to the next. Above 30 pounds, then this switch inside of here closes and it passes current from this terminal onto this terminal. Um, the second function of the switch is the high limit and that's set at 406 pounds. So above 406 pounds of pressure on the high side of your AC system, this switch internally to this, to this little fella opens up again and kills the power going to your compressor. So why is that important? Uh, we need to protect your system. It's, it doesn't protect you, it protects your air conditioning system. If we were to have a leak in your refrigerant system, uh, in your AC system, um, or on initial startup, your air conditioner compressor is gonna come pre-charged with oil. And if we were to start that compressor with no Freon in the system, or say we've lost the Freon out of your system, uh, immediately what's gonna happen when you turn on the compressor is we're gonna pump out the oil out of the compressor. Freon is what helps transport that oil back through the system, back to your compressor. So without Freon, we really don't want your compressor to run, even though it does have, it may have, it may start out with oil in it. Uh, so below 30 pounds of pressure on the high side, this little fella keeps your compressor from running uh, and potentially destroying itself. The high limit side, the reason for that function is that if we were to develop an obstruction in your expansion valve, uh, you've turned the air conditioner knob to full cold uh, and that uh, thermostat is measuring the temperature of your evaporator coil. And if your evaporator coil is not cool, then it sends an electrical signal out to your compressor saying, make me some cold air. This little guy goes in, in between your thermostatic control and the compressor. So we're just gonna come in and out. If you had an obstruction in your expansion valve, not letting Freon pass through, your evaporator inside the car is not going to get cold. The thermostat's gonna continue to tell the compressor to keep compressing, and it'll continue to compress until something gives way, and then we have a, a, a major malfunction. This guy shuts that compressor off at 406 pounds to prevent breaking, a, breaking the compressor or uh, rupturing a, a line or so on. So very important to have a safety switch. This is a binary switch. These switches over here are called trinary switches. Um, and you'll notice that instead of the two spade terminals, the trinary switches have four wires on them. Two of the wires are blue, two of the wires are black with a green stripe. So why a trinary switch? Well, a trinary switch does three things where a binary switch only does two. The black with green wires, the black wires with a green stripe, these perform the exact same function as these two terminals. So we're gonna come in from your thermostat on your control out to your compressor. This is gonna control the high and low limit function of the switch. The two blue wires that we don't have on a binary, this is the third function. The two blue wires will control an electric fan relay. So again, these two switches uh, make contact internally. These two wires become 
become contiguous internally at 30 pounds of pressure. They disengage at 406 pounds of pressure. That protects the system. These two wires uh, become contiguous or they make contact internally in the switch at 254 pounds of pressure. And that's about when we need to turn on your electric fan to pull air across the condenser. Um, a lot of guys say, well, I've got a thermostat, a thermostatic control on my electric fan and the engine temperature turns my fan on. Uh, that's true. But in the first minute or two of operation before the engine gets warm, uh, that compressor is going to be compressing that Freon and you're going to build head pressure up to 406 pounds uh, several times before the engine gets up to temperature. And it's important that instead of just building the head pressure and not making any cold air, it's important we turn that fan on, we get the air pulled across the condenser. Uh, two things, we're lowering the head pressure then and we're also making cold air inside the car. Uh, so these two wires uh, on the trinary switch, the blue wires will control your electric fan function. Don't have an electric fan, the, tr the binary switch works just fine. If you do have an electric fan, uh, we highly recommend the trinary switch. You'll notice that I have a total of four switches here. You'll notice that we have two different uh, styles of switches here. These are both binary switches. This particular one has male threads with an O-ring on it. This uh, binary switch is a female thread binary switch. Uh, the only difference in them is how they're installed or where they're mounted. The binary switch, or the, the male binary switch, typically installs on the dryer. And if you look at this dryer at the top here, there's a, a little, it looks like a 3 8 bolt. It uses a 9 16 wrench. That's simply a plug. You unscrew that plug. You screw the uh, binary switch into its place. And this obviously goes in the high side of your, comp of your uh, refrigerant system. So we're measuring pressure at the dryer. The female thread version of that um, can install very similarly on this little Schrader valve apparatus. This little Schrader valve can screw into the, to the uh, dryer. And then the female binary switch installs on top of that Schrader valve. Uh, so this little fella is pretty handy. One advantage of having the Schrader valve on your dryer um, is that if you ever need to service this and remove the safety switch, we haven't lost all of your Freon. The Schrader valve keeps the Freon in the system. Um, another option for mounting is this little guy. I found this little fella to be very handy. Um, it is a safety switch adapter fitting. On this side, we have a number six male O-ring fitting. On this side, we have a number six female O-ring fitting. So uh, this little guy can be mounted under the dash. I like to mount this either directly off of the expansion valve under the dash, um, on the inside of the bulkhead, on the firewall. It can even be mounted on the dryer itself on either side. And it includes this little Schrader valve port. So in that case, we would use a female uh, safety switch on there. Uh, same thing with trinary. We can mount the female trinary switch on there. Another option for mounting a safety switch is we have a crimp on fitting. This is a, a inline crimp fitting that would uh, crimp. You cut your number six uh, refrigerant line. This guy crimps into place and then it has a port to screw on the female uh, safety switch onto there. So the answer to your questions about safety switches, do you need one every single time you need one? Uh, do you need a, a binary switch or a trinary switch? Uh, if you're using an electric fan, we always recommend a trinary switch. Uh, if you're not using an electric fan, then the binary switch will protect your system just fine. Do I need a male thread or a female thread? Uh, the, the answer to that question is where are we going to mount it? Some of the vintage air SureFit kits have a Schrader valve similar to this that's installed on a hard line. In that case, we use the female switch. Um, if you're going to mount your safety switch in the dryer, then we would use the male version of it, male thread version like so. Um, lubricate the O-ring a little bit, screw it in the dryer, you're good to go. Uh, next time we'll talk a little bit about how to wire up the safety switches. Thanks for tuning in.